So we've, we're now live. Tony, you're on. Okay. I'm sorry. I somehow could not log in. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Thank you, Andrew. So hi, <laughs> my Dan. Twin, my twin. Hi, Andrew. Hi, David. Hi, Peg. Hi, Dana. Hi, Stephen. Hi, Elsa. Uh, good evening, villagers. Um, who else is on that I should be saying hello to? That's it. Anybody? Let's just keep okay. moving forward. All right. So welcome. This is the Village of Mamaroneck Flood Mitigation Advisory Committee, December 28th meeting. Um, we did send out a revised set of minutes of, of meeting, a, a revised agenda today. Um, so before we get into the agenda item, I just want to say a few things. Um, I want to go over the dates for the meetings this year. Um, kind of what wasn't in the agenda that got posted two days ago is that there's this NRCS floodplain easement program. So I want to talk about that. Um, the minutes we may want to discuss next month. And then someone had challenged me in the community about what regulations were we going to try to either change or stuff. The only thing that we're going to really be talking about as far as regulations go is the, the um, agreement that the board has that we, as the FMAC, can review applications in the floodplain, and that Tony, we will talk about. So Tony, before I, I get may, started, Peggy, go ahead. I'm sorry, if I may, there was one point Peggy, that- I can't hear you. I think you might be muted. No, I'm not. I can um, hear there was one point that was left off of the other asks in the beginning of the BOT meeting. Hey, Peggy, I can't hear you. I don't know why. Can other people hear Peggy? Yes. Can you hear? Can you hear me, Tony? David, you can hear her. Okay. Uh, Tony, wow, this is not going well. Okay, Tony, uh, we can hear you perfectly. I don't think you can hear us. I don't think you um, can. Can you hear us, Tony? David, can you try speaking so I can see if I hear you? You can't hear anybody. David, you're on mute. You too. Oh, there we go. Okay. You're not hearing anybody. Right, let me try to go in by my phone again. Do a sound check. Actually, go into the phone. He just dials in. I don't know if you can be on the phone and the Zoom at the same time. Can you? Yeah, you can. Yeah. You can? Yeah. Yeah. First of all, he's not attending as far as the system is concerned. Right. Exactly. I am. <laughs> twice. Right. Forgot about that. Yeah. And he's in there on here twice. Forgot about that. <laughs> that doesn't work as a twin very well, Andy. <laughs> Got not well at all. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you're connected uh, by phone. Okay. 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 Oh, no. No problem. Now we got the echo. Bye. 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 No, put him on mute. Uh, Tony, mute your the screen that you're on. Mute the screen that you're on with Andrew, and then you can talk through the phone. So mute the one that's on or that we're seeing right now. Oh no, I can't. You can't hear him. Now we can't hear you, Tony. Can't can hear you. Hear, can you hear us now? I can hear I can you. Hear you. <laughs> It's nope. not going to work with that. Terrible. I have an idea. No, I don't. Yes, I do. I have an idea. Tony, mute everything. Stay where you are. I will call you on your cell, and you can speak through the cell, but stay muted like on your um, or, Zoom. Or why doesn't Tony just log off the physical Zoom and only do it by phone? Peggy, that's way too simple. I'm sorry. And we are lost. <laughs> Tony, can you hear anything at this point? If so, say something. I can hear you, Dan. Okay. Uh, and I can hear you now. I can hear without you. Can hear us? Without an echo. Okay. So let, let's keep going. Yeah. 
move forward and let's go. Uh, let's keep okay. moving. I don't know what's, yeah, okay. That's working. Perfect. Okay, so for meeting dates, I why don't you just send me problem dates with an alternate or how do we want to, what's the best way to proceed? I think they're fine. It's the second Tuesday of the month. Oh, we're moving from the fourth to the second, Peggy? I mean, the fourth, excuse me, I'm sorry, Andrew, the fourth. I apologize. The fourth Tuesday. Well, it's always been the fourth. And if it's always conflict. been. Okay, so yeah. the, que the question, I think, um, Tony, is whether people want it at five in the future or want to move it to seven. What is everybody's feeling? Ideally, during a normal week, 7 p.m. Dan works a lot better for me and I'm not I'm it's gonna work better than five. The me only also. thing is to do it at 7 30 was so people could have dinner first. Right. Yep. Okay. I, I would much prefer to do it at seven because I have to do it from my office, which That's means fine. I don't get to eat till 10 <laughs> if I do it at 7 30. Okay, then let's just do it at seven. And obviously if something should occur like we did in the past during emergency. No, we we could we can always change it. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Uh, all right. So I assume that if we're we'll still be able to come, dial in remotely, even if it's a live meeting. Yes. Fine. Then I won't be anywhere that I can't come in remotely. Okay. Yeah. The only problematic week was the February one because that happens to be um, President's President's Week. So I don't know who's traveling. I know I'm traveling. I could try to. I'm not sure my schedule though there. I don't know if other people are going away with their kids on President's Week. Yeah, I'm traveling too on that week. You know, um, Tony, I can circulate the schedule from the school system as well because whatever, much like Stephen and Elsa, if they're having conflicts, I'm having conflicts and you're going to be losing three right there. I so. think week is the, is the fourth week of the month and that's the school holiday? I don't know. It's the week of the 21st. No, but the Oh, I see. So I got it. Mine, I apologize. Mm -hmm. So do we want to make it March 1st in that case? You, you know, if I can suggest, why don't we, we can email this to each other and just kind of come up with a consensus okay, rather than. Yeah. Okay. I'd like, I love to get to some of the meat and potato. Yeah. Um, Tony, just so you'll know, Andrew's got to leave at six. I'm leaving at 645. I don't know about anyone else. So we should yeah, so we got to keep moving. Yep. Okay, great. Um, so let's floodplain application review. D Dan had sent around, you have it in front of you. I tried to summarize. So comments on my summary. And then I think we need to talk about a time frame for tar turnaround, do we have to vote on this? Who do we send the responses to? And then does, should, or should we have, say uh, the village legal check out this whole process we set up? And in the meantime, could we just start to get the applications to review? So we could get kind of us ideas and process in place. I, I sent around to the committee and I feel very strongly about this, that we need to be trained because Tony, you've been trained for a land use board, the rest of us have not. I think we need some sort of training. I think we need to understand. Um, I had had a conversation with Dan about this and I tried to go on to the villages code and try and find out what the regulations are. And I'm sorry, my brain is not big enough to understand how to navigate mm -hmm. that. So I think we need very clear instructions from be it the building department, the village manager's office, somebody to tell us what the rules are for building in a floodplain, what the steps are and what needs to be included in a proper um, building request that goes out to planning and any of the other land use boards. I think if we don't, we're gonna be ineffective. We're shooting ourselves in the foot to start. I don't wanna do that either, Peggy, because I feel that if, if we jump into this too fast and make a mess of it, we're gonna lose our opportunity. 
and we're going to lose any credibility we have. Okay. So how do we get training? Dan, I think that's a question for you. <clears throat> we can tr see if we can arrange training for you. I'll, I will raise the question. What I'd like to suggest is, um, you know, if the committee wants, and I think it's, it's prudent that uh, any land use application uh, in a flood zone uh, that uh, has any, any expansion outside the footprint of the building uh, be sent to you, not for, you know, that you can review it if you wish and comment if you wish, but just that it be sent to you, not that it is that it's a formal submission. Dan, I completely agree with you. My biggest concern that I expressed to the committee as a whole is certainly addressed by that. In, in particular, hold on one second. Hold on. Hey, Blake, can you chill out for a second? Sorry. Afternoon activities. Um, um, my point is, I, I, I could sign up. I would definitely agree with that. I also I would be comfortable with that. I also feel, I mean, I've never looked in an application from an applicant. I don't know what they look like. I don't know what, I think, can we get some examples to send to us? Well, so we can become can try familiar. To some training. I can't, I can't tell you what, what would happen, what would okay. not happen, right. uh, but um, the, the issue for you all is to know what is being proposed in a flood zone and say, gee, that's fine. Or I don't know about this. So uh, we might have some questions. You know, and I think that's the type of thing that you can weigh in on when you can and weigh, not when you, you know, don't feel it's necessary. But there are specific documents, for example, in the construction um, for the property across from Maple and Rose next to Speedway, where the application went without any of the proper flood permits. And I don't know what the proper flood permits are to look for. We need some sort of direction. Peg, I will say that I was um, present during those meetings. And one of the things that caught their attention was the fact that some of the area was currently as it is impervious. And they're proposing to change that little impervious area, excuse me, impervious area to impervious. And that's what triggered a more thorough sort of need. No, but, but when the, the application yeah, we went to planning, it went without any flood documentation. That's there are my, my point is if, the, if the, the issue of whether it is a complete application or not a complete application is not yours to decide. It is the building department's responsibility or the planning department's responsibility. So if it's about flooding, we should be able to opine. I understand that that's what you have, that's what you're looking at. So in order to opine, we need it to understand better. That's all I'm saying. Understand. All right, so Dan is gonna look into training. Yeah. Andrew, can you go back to what you said a minute ago? It, you were trying to say, should we get some applications now to, to look at? Well, I think that would be a perfect example. I said that. <laughs> oh, no, Peggy, Peggy sorry. Said, no, Peggy, Peggy sorry, was Peggy. That. I was telling her that was a good example because that was an area where there was, an, there was a sliver of pervious. It's, it's grass right now. They're looking to make it impervious, although with water retention, Ooh. blah, blah, blah. That is a perfect example of something that we would have the opportunity to alpine. Not to stop or block, but to opine and provide input. That's all we're to do. Okay, so for now, we're saying that any application for new construction and renovation in the floodplain, excluding items such as interior renovations, electric. It's not renovation. It's just Tony. Tony. Tony Dan, that, Dan nailed it. Dan nailed it. Just Are we using Dan's sign offs? Anything. No, Dan that he, he, he before he nailed it. He, Anything that is an expansion of a the footprint uh, of a property in a floodplain, or new construction, or new construction. Okay, and like I so, like I shared, uh, uh, Tony. The reason is because sometimes, you know, for example, the recent flooding, we had to do a tremendous renovation job. Uh, that could have otherwise triggered the need to go to planning or what have you, but we didn't because again, it was repairs, you know, and, and you don't want to stop anything from existing 
and penalize it because you have to make repairs. So, right. Okay. So, so for now, footprint expansion of the footprint in a floodplain or new construction, any application of those two gets CC to FMAC. So Dan, could, what do we have to do? Should I respond I, to Dan's? No, I, I, will, I will take care of communicating that uh, to the board and the village manager and circulate that communication to the committee. Hey, can I just ask a question, Dan and Tony, when you say new construction, we're meaning new construction that exceeds the footprint of the existing, correct? That's what we're talking about. No, all new construction too. I mean, there could be empty space that they're putting- okay, Right, right. Well, if, if there's nothing existing and you're adding new construction, yes, but if you're doing new, and I'm just, again, I'm being a lawyer here. I'm wearing my lawyer yeah. for a second. If I'm doing new construction in the interior, does that deem as new construction? No, you're changing, if you're changing the footprint. Okay, I just wanna make sure, okay. Okay, great. Awesome. All right, thank and then for, we'll get- Thank you for entertaining and then, and the during future, my concerns committee. Thank you. Then we'll get some training and then we'll determine time, turnaround time, voting any of that stuff no you're not going to worry about it. you either comment when you can comment or you don't or you comment late and that nobody pays attention to it that's up to you but you can't the land land use boards have to follow their rules and uh, procedures i think when we had proposed this we had said from the it, we must review it within the next meeting upon receipt of yeah, but, uh, the planning board meets twice a month you meet right. once a month that means that they, no, we'll, they'll, we'll that have. potentially you'd have to hold an applicant up because you guys didn't, you know, or you gals didn't get to it. So I think you can't, I don't think that you can change the regulations and nope. procedures of the land use board, but I think you have the right to comment individually as well as as a committee as time permits. And rarely anything moves for, through any committee uh, land use committee in one meeting. Right, which is why we said if we get it, if the group discusses it at the next flood meeting, we should still be okay. But it can't it can't go on for two or three meetings. It has uh, to be the next meeting. But that, that, that's, that's a rule that you may or may not want to be self-imposed. The question is, get the thing that sent, sent to you as early as possible, and you comment as a, when and if you all can comment individually or collectively. And I think that's the that is the best of all worlds, rather than getting caught up into, uh, you know, well, what happens if I don't do it in thirty days or twenty days or whatever? It just it gets to be complicated. Dan, is it as simple as when a proposal is available for public discussion, public presentation? No, when, when, when it's forwarded to the land use boards, it should be forwarded to you. Period. Period. Right. You know, and you can you get to it when you can get to it as quickly as possible, and you make your comments as quickly as possible. You know, and if something strikes you as very significant, you know, uh, you can communicate that individually. If the board, if the committee hasn't been able to meet as a committee, um, you know, and said that you know that you're raising this at the, your next committee meeting for further advice. And I'm gonna agree with Dan um, that my experience going before the planning board, zoning board, blah, blah, blah. Generally, you're not, it's not one touch. It's not a touch and go. It usually, especially if it's more involved, you're gonna spend at least Over two to three months there. So, you know, so. we'll be able to do that. My, my question to you, Tony and Peg, what do you envision in terms of the review process by us as members of flood mitigation? Uh, Elsa, Stephen and I feel a certain way. Peg, you and David and Dana feel a certain way. How do we, what's the consensus? Do we take a vote? Do we, like, how do we handle that? I think we'd have to take a vote. It would have to be a majority of the committee. To make a presentation as, to make a presentation as a committee, absolutely. We also individually have rights as anybody. Oh, that's, what, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it, it, exactly. Right. And we shouldn't be, we can't be precluded from that if we have, for instance, a minority opinion. Yeah, exactly. All right. So, so what we're saying is if we want to send them a, a FMAC memo, opine, we'll meet by majority vote. Yep. And if, if members feel strongly they want to opine themselves, they can do that. Sure. You're okay. still members of the community. Yep. 
Okay. Let me ask you a question, Peggy and, and, and uh, Tony. Would we, I'm just using an example, Peggy, you feel a certain way, everyone else feels different. Would you submit um, your I, concept as a- It would just be an individual and not a member of the flood mitigation committee. Right, right. Okay, just want to, that way- And we, I would have to make that clear in my opinion to whatever board it is. I just want to, okay. the last thing we want is for us to be divisive. We want to make sure that it's right. That's, I would imagine the kinds of things we're going to be opining about will be able to agree upon. And obviously, there are going to be times if I have, for example, an application or something that's going to, I will certainly step You're going to have to refuse yourself. Okay. Right. Okay. No problem. Okay, great. Okay. Next item we had Army Corps meeting. So I think. So right now, I don't know the status of what's going on with the Army Corps. Um, I, the only thing I put down here was a list of possible agenda items. I think we do need an agenda for when we meet with them. Tony, but... we've sent that. The committee has already sent that. That was the memo I gave you a copy of. That was the December memo. Okay. So, so just to give you a, a background on it, if you don't mind. Um, yeah, go ahead. The Corps is has a meeting on, I believe it's January 15th. Um, Dana, your minutes were phenomenal. I've got to say yeah. on this oh, yeah. in the last um, meeting, but um, there's a meeting on the 15th, which is the next hurdle that the Corps needs to get through. It's a review. Um, it's been approved by the county, which they were lacking and the state. That's all been done. So we are hoping to get the meeting sometime between the 15th and as soon after, love it by the end of January if we can. But as soon after, the, they, they can't do anything with us until after the 15th and this hurdle is met. Do we, do we do it as a public meeting? What we as a committee had requested was to go through the, our points first so that the core would be prepared. We've taken a lot of the public's input in putting this list together. We wanna review it with them first and then schedule a public meeting soon after. We don't want this to be delayed. Okay, so Dan, how do we proceed on getting a meeting soon after the 15th? Do you have an idea? Uh, I think what needs to be done is the committee has to uh, request uh, the meeting to uh, the core through the village manager uh, and the board of trustees. Well, we've done that once. Well, but that's what you, that you're following up. So we, I think we have to wait until the 15th and get through this hurdle and then we can submit another request. Or should we just send the request in saying? I don't think so. I think we should wait and make sure they get past that hurdle. At one point, I think we were talking about a joint board of trustees FMA, FMAC meeting. Is, is that the same meeting or would there be, would there be two meetings or what are we, we talking about? We did that about? meeting in December, but of course- I, I meant with the core, with the with Army the Corps. Corps. The village manager's office should be there and whomever from the board of trustees wants to be there should be there, absolutely. Yeah, okay. It's not just us. Yeah, so that might make it easier to, to, to make it a meeting, to, just to include everybody. But, but Megan told us fairly clearly what the time, Megan from um, Senator Schumer's office told us the timing when she met with us last month. And I think at this point we should respect the timing and then we can reach, I think we should probably reach out to Megan on the 16th of January and find out if that hurdle's been accomplished. If you agree, Dan? And uh, then- Sounds like a reasonable approach. And then I would say we should reach out to the village and the Corps again to reschedule. Okay, so the plan is, is we're gonna reach out to Megan in Schumer's office yeah. January 16th, get an update. If they have an approval to proceed, we request a meeting ASAP between FMAC, village manager, board of trustees and Army Corps of Engineer. Yep. Okay, all right, great. All right, I have preparedness next. Uh, Tony, can I go back up to the top of your agenda? Because there's one point that was left out yes, that I think is sure. important. Um, 
in the points that we went through with the village in that meeting on the 13th, the other thing that we had talked about was we had proposed legislation as a committee to the village 18 plus months ago. One of the things we had requested was um, any new construction commercial be built above the base flood elevation. We talked about permeable paving um, solutions for new construction. I think that goes with your other asks that future legislation is something that we need to keep on the radar screen and the village needs to get back to us, the board, the village manager's office, whomever. So Peg, I'm still on asks. Right, I'm so sorry, I, I may have not printed out. I, I'm away, so I didn't print out what you sent today, but my original one said BOT meeting updates, asks and other asks. Yeah, so I, I redid it today so that all right, the asks are covered. I apologize. Yeah. No, I'm, not a problem. No way, so I didn't see that, but I just no, want to make sure we keep that in there. And just so yeah, preparedness the our is... members are know, and Tony, I know you that you know this, Peg and Dan Natchez, I know you know this as well, but part of the flood, excuse me, part of the industrial advisory committee factoring in exactly what Peg and Tony were just talking about, about that elevation. Lion's share, obviously 90% of the industrial area there are only 16 residential units in the industrial area, which composes of 72 acres. Everything else is commercial. Building it up above that, above that flood level, but uh, the legislation that we have proposed for the industrial area obviously yields a credit so that individuals are encouraged to build higher, you know, but they wanna be penalized by not being able to utilize the property as they desire. And one other thing, just so that you all understand, 85% of the industrial area is impervious. We have a zero, zero lot. You can go up to the sidewalk, zero, zero with cement. And that's so when you see the concerns I shared in the past in the emails, any development that we talk about in that particular area, we are encouraging and incorporating the need for adding green space or obviously storm management. So I just, so you understand the yep. legislation that we are working on definitely factors in the need to build up higher. So. It's sensitive to it, absolutely, always has been. Okay, so if we jump past preparedness, my next bullet point is regulations review, RE the asks, just FRI Peg. So okay. can, I don't, and Peg, maybe we have this, mm -hmm. but do we have a summary list of regulations that, we can start to look at in a, in a, in a organized manner? I'm not quite sure what you mean by regulations, Tony, I'm sorry. Well, Andrew just mentioned some, uh, some regulations that the industrial area is concerned with working on. So I'm asking, are there other regulations that either we know we need or yeah. we know need to be changed well, part of that is the, the legislation that we were requesting so that outside of the industrial area, any new construction in a commercial area must be elevated. So that's a regulation we're trying to pass. Any new construction in the non-industrial area be built with pervious rather than impervious paving. So these are two regulations that we've been requesting. I mean, it's kind of all tying together with the other point that I had made. This is all stuff we've been waiting for in terms of basic regulations of building and a flood plan that kind of ties back to the question of, do we, can we get a list from the village of what the regulations are building in a flood plan for um, our influence with the land use committees? It, it all so that, ties together. So that's kind of my question. Is there- There's no existing get? list that we have. That's why I wanted to request one. All right, so Dan, is there a list who would who could generate one? Um, how do we get started on this? I'm not quite sure what you're asking. If you're talking about existing regulations, uh, the, plan, the, uh, the planning department or the building department can certainly give you that. In terms of proposed legislation, the the only thing that is that is surfaced at the moment, uh, <clears throat> you know, is um, what what uh, your committee has put forth 
uh, and the board took that seriously and has asked for the, the village council to try and draft something to that effect. Uh, and when, you know, when that gets done, you know, that'll be forwarded to the committee. Great. But in terms of other things, you know, I mean, um, I don't really think there is anything else. Well, there are lots of there are lots of things. I mean, you the EC has their own regulations. The core has their regulations. Most of them are built around FEMA, but there are other things. Um, I'm not sure that that's something that you may want to that you really want to spend your time in, as opposed to the more practical things of what do you really want to see in this village, <laughs> and then and get get your ideas consummated with constructive suggestions and then see how that fits into the different regulations. I also think it's a good idea to get our hands, our heads wrapped around what exists on our village level first. We can always take it to a different level if we need to, but I don't know that we'll need to. All right, so Dan, you said that the council is drafting some it's, legislation. It's referred to council to draft. I don't know when we will see the draft. All right, okay. Can you follow up to see for the, our next meeting where that is? As soon as what I said is as soon as a draft comes out, I will make sure it's distributed to the committee. Okay. There, there's a lot there's a lot going on in the village. So I, I don't I'm not I'm hesitant to put any timetable down for anything. Because okay. at least the second least, point then would be getting our arms around all, uh, all floodplain regulations, as Peggy, you just said. I think so the building department should be able to give us that information. I can relay that, or you can send an email, whatever you want, Tony. All right, well, how do we, Peggy, what do you think is best? Maybe we do both. Dan, why don't you ask, and why don't we follow up with a committee um, okay. I, I will send yeah. an email out uh, tomorrow. Okay. Uh, to the village, uh, copy the committee, and you guys can come. Uh, and and let's, let's see what response we get back from Dan's email, and then we'll take it from there. Okay, great. Um, going back to preparedness, which was also one of our asks, I know we have a, a lot of lists. Andrew, you used the word low hanging fruit mm -hmm. is there. So I think the village, and this is from what I heard from you, Peg, I think it was that they, they want to get something done sooner than later. So are there things on that list that we could ask Dan to push um, the village manager on to get them done? Let me let me ask one question, Dan Natchez, sir. If while there are small projects that perhaps, for example, the road to nowhere could be addressed, are we going to screw up our relationship with the Army Corps if we go ahead and do something without their complete blessing? It depends what you do. So you, I think, you, in other words, if you got to, if you got a few more million dollars out of Schumer's office. For the core plan to do something, right. I don't so, think anybody would be objecting. Maybe I didn't explain myself correctly. Let me let me look at it this. Explain it better. So, for the road to nowhere, for example, yes. if we were to go to the village of Harrison and say we have a project that straddles Harrison and Mamaroneck, that has been an an issue that is a hundred and fifty thousand dollars, let's say repair. It's not a multi multi million dollar repair, and we think the village of Mamaroneck and the town of Harrison should get together and request money from the county where there is a $14 million um, kitty for a flood project. Would that be jeopardizing in any way or the, the core project? I think it depends on how you do it, but I don't think that that's a problem. It's, it's, not, it's not in the core project right now. So multi, trying to get multi-funding, it can always be helpful, not right. hard. I just don't want to step on anybody's toes. But, but I, but I think what you need to do is keep everybody informed as you do this, rather than come in as a fait accompli. Right. We, I wasn't, my, my, my thoughts were, I wasn't sure if physical projects, low-hanging physical projects 
should be included or excluded. So for example, Tony, the road to nowhere is a low hanging physical <laughs> project. Um, looking into project home run in Harrison and the implications it has on Beaver Swamp Creek could be, I don't know enough to know if it's a low hanging project, but it's worth looking at. And then there are sort of um, building line items into the village machinery. For example, should there be a line item in every budget for the DPW that the rivers get physically walked into and cleaned, that there are small dredging projects done every year, like the Grove Street overpass, which is so blocked, it's almost two of those um, courses going under 95 are almost completely blocked. Um, the vacuum truck, as Andrew keeps bringing up, these are serious issues. Um, and then there's a whole other se section of um, 911 calls. There are, there are a lot of different things we can add to this and different ways of looking at it, but they're all preparedness. Peg, I think, and Tony, I think that uh, with regards to the low hanging fruit, we could definitely have three sort of items on this. So Andrew, uh, let me just interrupt a second. I think it would be prudent to take a new topic, which I'm calling watershed flood planning, and put in that the projects that are not in the Army Corps. For example, what the things all you just said, Peggy, the road to nowhere, be the swamp stuff. Because then we could get different funding. Um, there's a green infrastructure program from the state from what I hear. So I think this, if we talk about watershed planning, we're going to get more feet. That's so let Tony, me, let me just yeah. interrupt for a second, give you some history on that. So that is something that was brought up after the 2007 floods that the county looked at it on a watershed basis, because I think there are eight watersheds in the county and they were going to set up taxing authorities in each of the watersheds. And because it's not fair that we get all of White Plains and purchases and everybody north of us is water coming down and ending up in our drain. So the thought process was at the time in 07 from the county level was to set up these watersheds and to, they were taxing authorities, money would be raised to do the projects in the bottom of the drain, if you will, communities to help ease and, and whatever else could be done along the way. I've spoken with both George and with Catherine Parker since Ida about it. So I think the right thing to do would be for us as a committee to draft something and, and not tonight, but to draft something and send it to the village to then for, and Dan tell me if this is the right way to do it, to go back to looking at these watershed authorities so that we can begin to do these smaller projects that the Army Corps doesn't tackle. So I like that because I think you're on, that, that you're on the definitely the right path. Other people have comments, Dan? No, I, I think it, it's very helpful for you to try and identify the different projects and prioritize them. Uh, the village has a, on retainer, a firm to seek grants uh, for different projects. Uh, I don't know that they have focused on the some of the issues that you think you know are priorities and low hanging fruit. And I think that is a very significantly constructive approach to life, uh, and only can help and can't hurt. I I I agree. I think there should be a list of all these projects in a time a timeline when we want them to be done. <laughs> and uh, maybe a description because I don't know what the road to nowhere is. So Peggy, I'll, 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 I'll call you later. You I'll, I'll call you later. You. I'll give you a guided tour. And in, by the way, I'm gonna take you up in your invitation to go and visit Super. the rivers. Super. Um, but but I think in that whole mouthful that I went through, there are also regulations on a local level that we should, or, or ideas, not regulations, pardon my poor um, choice of words. There are things like building into the DPW regular maintenance. 
these things okay. need to be done. And also, there's a five-year capital plan that gets worked on every year, I believe. And at some point, the village of Mumaranek and the core project will begin and will need to be maintained. And we should have line items in that capital project for five years down the road of how we're going to pay for this stuff. All right, so if, if we agree that we go to George and Catherine for watershed type projects. County um, County, right, county the watershed, yeah. Um, let's talk about a letter to the, to the board of trustees to get that forward. Maybe yeah. I can draft something and just send it around to everybody. Does that sound okay? Um, Sending a letter doesn't do any good until you get figure out what projects you want and why. And I think, that, them? And I I think that's what you should do first. And it, then send the letter that's more effective. Otherwise they'll say, okay, that's great. What? I, Maria DeRose uh, also has a hand up everybody, just so you'll know. Oh, I didn't see that. <clears throat> yeah, Peggy, what happened to the, uh, pro, uh, to when you were trying to do the, um, in, you know, the uh, watershed idea, did this kind of died? It, you know what happened, unfortunately, after 2007, all those years went by and it didn't flood and people kind of forgot and it got pushed off the radar. But now that we have all this momentum from Ida, maybe this is the time we can get this together. But again, we can't wait too long because then the inevitable will happen. If I can, just before, because it's coming around six o'clock and then I'll, I'll, I'll leave you guys. Um, with regards to the itemization, which I was saying before, the low hanging fruits, when I talk about that, we have, for example, the back truck. We know we have a list of problematic storm areas uh, with storm drains that get clogged. That again, we can break it down 72 hours out, 48 hours out, 24, hour, 24 hours out. We, there used to be a systematic approach as to how it was addressed. Going to the most pressed storm drains, handling the issue with the, with the dams, going into the riverbanks and removing uh, mattresses and TVs, things like that, that can be a source of clogging. These are low hanging fruits that most of these items can be done with the budget that we currently have, because these are individuals that are being paid through the DPW. So there should be some type of public, like if I want to go online, there should be some type of published schedule in terms of how this is done in advance of a significant storm system. Then you go to the larger low hanging fruits, but these are things that we can start January 1st, boom. Well, there be, that's why I'm saying some of this we should be doing on a local level and some of it right, becomes right, right. So, county level. So, with so regards all of those vacuum truck, cleaning the grates, getting rid of the debris, the still backup, the we, we, have to, we have to put that, I think, in front of the board as a, as a suggestion from this committee of regular, maintenance that needs to be done and, automatically. And that's not so, that's something that doesn't cost anything other than just effectuating it and implementing it. And that's the beauty of it. And they were at one point, I don't know what the status is at this point. I don't want to speculate, but for example, and I'm just going to use this, when the back truck was down, make sure that we are- The our cook is around. The cook is good. And if we have to, so be it. You know, so, so that's, that, that's what I'm talking about. Can I make a suggestion? Why don't we each come up with a list before our next meeting and email it around to each other of local Love projects? To. Love to. All right, so on preparedness, we're gonna share ideas on low hanging fruit and summarize and prioritize. Yep. Okay, cool. Um, Andrew, do you have any other major words of wisdom before you have to escape? You know what? You're, you're. I, I appreciate that, and that's the ultimate compliment of words of wisdom. I, I don't, I, you know, that, I don't hear that often, uh, co-chair. But uh, I'm going to sit idle for the next six minutes and whatever. You know, if there's anything I can chip in, I will certainly do that and I'll participate. But I thank you again. If I can conclude this, Peggy, Tony, you have incredible experience as leaders on various land use boards and committees. Peggy with flood mitigation. Tony, you were side by side with me down in Washington. You've been there. 
we have wonderful individuals that are now part of MAC, FMAC with talent. We've got energy. I really look forward to 2022. This is a great group. And Andrew, I think that, before you go, yeah. I got one thing I want you to vote on. Yes, sir. So the NRCS, Natural Resources Conservation something from the USDA has a floodplain easement program. It's like a buyout. They've, from what I heard, approached the county and they assist with buyouts and floodplains. There are matching funds. They're supposedly way less than normal, right? The village has to do a letter of intent to this program by December 31st to be able to participate. The letter of intent has no you know, strings attached. If you, we don't wanna do it down the road, we don't have to do it. It sounds to me like a no brainer can you send um, know, some sort of um, information around about this? I just heard about it today, Peg. Ms. Tony, just so you'll know, when I, before I raised my house, I went through this with um, it was the HMD. I, th I can't remember which program it was. They were offering me a fraction because it's right. based on a state value of yes. homes. That's so correct. the amount of money that you would get to buy, as a buyout in this area from those programs is minuscule. Just so, need to Peg, so the only thing I'm hearing. Wait, wait, wait hold on. Let me, just, let me just finish my thought, please. One of our questions to the Army Corps of part of the project is, will you do buyouts and at what price point? Will they be realistic price points? Will they be pre ida price points. So, I mean, if you want to go ahead and do it, it's fine, but I just, I'm, and, my past Peggy, experience. Tony, that is a, that is a very complicated, the, the uh, arriving at fair market value, pre Ida, post Ida, Ida, excuse me, that's a, we could have a four hour discussion about that in itself. So I'm, I'm and, and Tony, if I can, they're asking for the village to commit to no, just made it okay. I'm just the letter of intent just says you may want to be in the program. No commitment, no obligation, and this no isn't obligation. something the village does every year. Are you sure Dan Sarnoff isn't doing this? No, it's it's from what I hear, it's something new. Yeah, would we want some kind of opinion from the village attorney on something like this? Yeah, or the manager's yeah, office. Yeah, make a suggestion that it seems uh, prudent at least to explore it and to go to the meeting and find out what it is and then report back and see if we want to continue with it. I'm sorry, is there a meeting scheduled? I missed that. Tony. Um, There's I a heard walk today through. they're gonna be in the village. No, they're gonna be someplace in the village 4th and 5th of January. I don't know where, I don't have any information. I gotta say, I just heard this today. Dan Sarnoff is usually really plugged into this stuff. I think. My suggestion would be to start with Dan. All right, I'll reach out to Dan. Dan Natchez, what do you think? I, I think Tony is looking for an expression of interest to pursue this. Uh, he's looking for the committee to do so. If that's the case, then the committee should say, yes, we do. No, we don't. Uh, you're not obligated to do anything. Uh, Dan is um, in recuperation. I will reach out to him uh, <clears throat> by email. Um, Regarding this, I forgot um, about that. You know, but I, but I, but I think it would be because of the timeline. It can't hurt. You know, it well, can't as hurt. As, as and as and, and if it's a program that it, that helps that somebody wants to take advantage of, you know, why not? If you know we're part of it, let them do that. If, yeah, you know, as long as the LOI has a non-commit. I mean, as long as you're not obligated. I mean, you're, you're not obligated to do anything, but you you can't join unless you do send a letter in by. Uh, Friday, sorry, and we might as well have the letter sent. Okay. All so, right. and it has so to come from Jerry. And so, the question I think that uh, Tony has raised in discussions with Jerry is to get an expression of interest that at least we should pursue it and send a letter. Tony, in. so we can have a unanimous vote if that's something that you're that we're interested in. If indeed there's no absolute commitment to this, it's obviously for exploratory purposes. I would certainly join with 
the mem remaining members. Uh, I would like, I, I agree, but I would really like to see more information about this. I'm willing to commit to it because it's not going to weigh anybody down, but I really would like to see some more information on this. Right. So I would say to Tony, ask, tell Jerry we're on board as long as everybody else on the committee is on board, but we'd like more information back from him. Sure. Okay. Folks. Anybody opposed? No. Okay. All right. I'll reach out to Jerry tomorrow. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a wonderful new year. And one thing that you may want to discuss this evening or, or save it for the next one, everything we're doing, by the way, and there are certain people that say, well, wait a second, I live in Shrakers, I live in Oriental, I live here, I don't get affected by what happens with flood mitigation or this and that. We all do. This is when it comes time to getting insurance or our community rating, the better we are, the better our rating is, the better we are as a whole. So that's something that for, for Steve, Elsa, you know, and Dana, I'm sure you heard that uh, term, uh, Something that's really important because I can't tell me times I've had discussions. People say, wait a second, I don't flood. I live here. I'm like, but you still get insurance and our rating as a whole is impacted by what happens in the community. And whatever anyway, any money, money anybody gets from FEMA is coming from everybody's taxes. That's right. So if we could so, solve the problem, we wouldn't have to be rebuilding. Or at least, at least mediate. So everyone have a wonderful, great meeting. Love happy, seeing everybody. Happy and healthy. Safe travels. and Just be safe, everyone. All right. Good to see you. Thank you. Thanks, Andrew. Um, uh, before you go on, Maria's had her yeah, hand up for a while. Gonna, Tony, do you, have a prob do you have a problem of allowing her to speak? That's your decision. Who has she her hand up? She's Maria a member Rose. of the public. And a former member of the committee. Yes, yeah, no, go right ahead. Maria, you're on. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yep. Hi, Maria, yes. yes. Hi. Sorry to um, keep waiting. No, Dan, that's okay. It's okay. You guys were really getting into it. I didn't want to interrupt. I just wanted to interject when you were speaking about the um, the Beaver Swamp Creek yeah. that I had, um, as you remember, I had met with Jerry about this yeah. and he had sent me um, an email before the holidays uh, that had, he had gone before the town of Rye and the town of Rye is now looking into replacing the footbridge that's behind Continental View, which will help a little bit. So just, I don't know where he's at with that or where the town of Rye is at with that, but that's something to keep on the radar because yeah. that will give us a little alleviation, but it's definitely not. But um, we, we really need to meet also with Harrison on project. Yeah, run I was going to say that. It's, that was. it's definitely not going to correct the mess the project home run caused. Right. Um, so I don't know if, if Harrison can do anything about that, but getting on them would be great. Okay, so Maria, we, we are gonna try to have this kind of watershed approach. So we're definitely gonna look at every other town that has water that's coming down toward Mamaronek, okay? Right. Um, okay. Thank you, Maria. Thank you. So let's see. The other things I wanted to talk about tonight was, do we want to take our members and try to have people focus on dis different areas? Um, you know, preparedness, watershed flood protection, uh, regulations. I don't know, thoughts on this? I know, Stephen, you were interested in quite a few things. Uh, thoughts? Danny, you give me a very dubious look. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Maybe that's later on down the road. Okay. Until we, we get things more organized. All right. I, mean, I really, I think our biggest task right now is the Army Corps. Okay. But that's, you guys opine in. Yeah, anybody else? That's okay with me. I mean, I think, you know, I think you're right with the Army Corps project and all this, all the other things that we've been talking about in general for the you know, last year. All right. I guess it's, if, you know, the prepare, even the preparedness, there's a lot of stuff there that, you know, we could push. 
I think we need to organize that into, into sections, Tony. Okay, all right, we'll wait. Um, all right. If you want, I'll take a stab at that. All right, that would be great. So then the last thing I have on here was sound shore flood planning. Um, I know uh, we got hammered in uh, Sandy. I think we need to consider some type of a plan for down there. Uh, and it's not something we're going to solve tonight, but I'd like to keep it on the radar. When you say a plan, what do you mean? Well, New York City is spending lots of money trying to figure out what they're going to do for the next Sandy. Mm -hmm. I don't know what we could do for any reasonable amount of money. But what are we doing now? I mean, I know we have evacuation routes. Uh, you know, I, I think we need to be a little more knowledgeable about that area. Do we even have a way of defining for our Sound Shore area what problems there are or might be? Is anyone studying that? Are there any reports? Is there anything we can read? Is there anything that's already been done that we can begin to understand? I mean, it's a huge matter. I, and, and I, I would like to add, um, I want to agree uh, with you because last time like we, we had the meeting with the board of trustees, you made a good point saying that we had to communicate to the rest of the community what we're doing. Because uh, I have people approaching me saying, nobody's doing anything. It's gonna happen the same thing as, as Sandy. Yeah. And we don't want that perception. We want to keep people communicated and I don't know how to do it at this point, but we, we should come up with something. Yeah, let me ask you, I know, um, you know, I mean, I see a lot of Tom Murphy, you know, Facebook uh, postings, and I think he does a pretty good job in communicating. Do we want to do something like that as a committee, maybe post things that are important to flooding and just this way we keep it in the um, in the in the mind in the minds of people, um, you know, in those in like the Florence Park Facebook group or the Marinette Moms and Dads Facebook group, maybe something along those lines. I think we should ask uh, the, the mayor that if we can coordinate efforts instead of one group doing this, the other group doing that, uh, why not get together and do it together? Well, what, Dan, what about Robert's newsletter? I mean, that comes out occasionally and as needed. Um, does it provide us with a place to make the wider village at least aware we're doing something? whatever that might be. Isn't that the vehicle that's probably getting the widest distribution at this point? Are people actually reading it? Dan, the, what's your... What's your uh, uh, it is certainly an avenue that is, worth, that, uh, is available for anything that is considered to be meaningful and newsworthy. Um, and, you know, do, feel free to use it. Uh, uh, there are other vehicles as well. I think for, you just sort of have to figure out what, what it is that you want to do. Of course. Well, Dan, the last time we dealt with the Army Corps, there was, as you know, a lot of communication between FMAC and the villagers because we held meetings every two weeks and there was no COVID. I'm sure, you know, residents want to know what's happening, Ari, the Army Corps. Uh, we have uh, to have an Army Corps meeting. There's no question with the community. Yeah, and then we have to communicate that to the village. Well, the village needs to communicate it to the community. Okay. We can, we can, we can add in small ways, but that's really for the village, I believe, to get the minute, the minute the Army Corps schedules a meeting, it's gonna take over like wildfire anyway. Everybody's gonna to wanna to be there. True. Okay, um, so- Maria has another, another hand raised, by the way. Just wanna make sure you all know. 
Maria, go ahead. Go ahead, Maria. Maria, are you still wanting to talk? You're on if you do. If you're not. I'm sorry, can you hear me now? Yes. Now we can. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, um, the communication for Henri was very good from the village. I mean, that went out a hundred no. different ways. The communication from Henri was awful. The communication oh, sorry. Henri was, was good. awful. <laughs> Ida was good. Sorry, you're right, Peggy. <laughs> Henri was awful. The village learned, and the communication from Ida was excellent. I mean, we had reverse 911 going. We had everything. The problem is, and the problem always has seemed to be, the follow through. Um, evacuation routes during Ida were blocked. The evacuation route, Old Bay Plains Road, was blocked for the construction. Not our fault, but there was no contingency plan. Yep. to get those people out of Washington bill out. The 911 system failed miserably. Um, Harbor Heights was deadlocked. Uh, there was no fire truck up there. There was no ambulance. There was no police car. Thank God no one had a medical emergency because they would have just dropped dead with no way to get out. Happened before. We, right. It's not a, a matter, I feel, it's not a matter of communication on the part of this committee because this committee put together one heck of a good flyer that went out rob managed to get that out on a daily basis um he just kept reminding the community it's coming prepare it's coming prepare uh, there there needs to be some serious follow-up i don't i don't know what it is from the village even if it means purchasing spending somebody purchasing a high water vehicle uh people were rescued and just left outdoors the entire night during that storm uh because they they couldn't get anywhere I mean, there was just too much water to go in here, but these are the things that the village needs to look into, in my opinion, that I feel need to be looked into and learned from the lessons learned that how can we go back and correct that? Maria, and you're absolutely right. And these were all points that Maria brought up after Ida that we incorporated into the 28 point memo that we sent to the village back in September and then again in October. So one of the questions is still, when are we gonna get some answers? to those questions. And I will redraft those points into our preparedness thing that I'm gonna to put together. But Dan, in fairness, we've been asking for three months, four months for a lot of these questions to be answered. And we've had no communication from the village. And we appreciate that the village has been extraordinarily overworked, but can we get some sort of a timeline as to when some of these questions will be answered? I can't give you an answer. I just think you <clears throat> should uh, resubmit your questions. Uh, you know, <clears throat> I, can't, I can't give you an answer to that. Okay. And Peggy? Mm -hmm. If you don't mind to send the, those 28. Already thought of it. Okay, thank you. And Tony, going back to your comment um, regarding the South Shore area, um, especially after Sandy, there, there are matters here that were not even addressed or looked at after that storm. Um, rightfully so, the village concentrates more on the riverine flooding because that happens to us on a, you know, on a monthly basis, every time there's a drop of rain, that's the major problem in the village. So the sound shore kind of gets like pushed off to the side because there are fewer coastal storms. But again, the coastal storms, that's what affects us down here. And also, you know, from Sandy, that water backs up from the harbor. Um, there's no retaining wall on one side. And I pointed that out to uh, Jerry, one side of the Beaver Swamp Creek, um, closest to Shore Acres Drive, the road, there's no retaining wall there. The retaining walls that are further up the creek all collapsed during Sandy. The big, big stones are still sitting in the middle of the river. Those things were never addressed. Again, you know, if there was a schedule for these things to be addressed and corrected, you know, on a every spring, like this is the area we're going to concentrate on, this is what we're going to do, this is what we're going to get done. Um, but the longer it builds up, the more it costs because to do it all at once is going to be a, a huge, huge project because it was never touched. Maria, and I fear, like you said, Peggy, the maintenance after the Army Corps project 
is not going to happen. It's it's going to be neglected and it's just not going to be as effective as it should be in years to I, come. I have a suggestion because I'm the first one to tell you I know nothing about coastal. I'm the river queen. Um, Elsa and Maria, you both live in an area that that's your big, your, your hot button. Is there a way the two of you can just get together for maybe a half an hour over a coffee and Maria, can you help Elsa put together a list that we can, she can bring back to the committee and we can start using that proactively? Absolutely, absolutely. Elsa may even know more than me, but, <laughs> but definitely. We know we nothing, can, so. We <laughs> could can, can definitely get together and do that. And um, yes. yeah. Yeah, obviously it's not just the coastal and, and flooding can, because during Ida, we were hammered. Yeah. Um, can, can I interject it, uh, and suggest that um, that you all send an email to Jerry ASAP outlining the issue of what you're talking about, including the collapse, you know, um, of the seawall from the uh, culvert down to the bridge, as well as the restriction of the bridge. All of that can be put into the FEMA grant, uh, re restoration grant, uh, or rest or uh, reimbursement uh, uh, for the damage done by FEMA. But there is a deadline, uh, that I believe it's the middle to towards the end of January for that to be done. I believe it's the 13th or so. So that should be done ASAP. Okay. And Dan, you're welcome. You're welcome to come down anytime and see it. I mean, just park your I know car it. and drive. I, I, I see it all I the time. You're I've on the other side, property, you're on the other side of the street. But... <laughs> you know, it, yeah, it, I'd like to see it because I've never seen it. I understand, I'm but what I'm trying to suggest is there is a potential funding mechanism that expires in two weeks. Okay. Okay. And it, the, whatever you can do to send, I would send it to email directly to Jerry and with a copy to the board and to this committee uh, outlining the issues and with a couple of pictures. Yeah. I, I also, after, right after Ida, I, I spoke to several of my neighbors. And they agree that they were going to, they were willing to sign a letter. So if that has more weight, uh, then. Uh, it, I wouldn't wait for that. You're, you're on borrowed time. You know, this is government, government moves very slowly. And, it, and you need to move very quickly on this. That's what I'm trying to suggest. Okay. Another, yeah, another related issue might be the, uh, the grant to reconstruct the seawall. I mean, I know it's something we're not. That grant has just been approved. Yeah, is that something like, you know, should we look, you know, is that a part, I think that's all a part of what we're kind of talking about a little bit. I mean, is that something we have purveyed to even get involved with or, um, or want to get involved with or can't get involved with or, or is it? Well, isn't that for a specific project? Yeah, it's um, Harbor Island Park. The park right, so maybe we should first try and get into this February 13th due date grant and see if we can't get more money to, to handle this because that's probably already been used up for the Harbor Island grant. So, all right, so let's do this. Maria and Elsa, I'd like to see that wall because would the committee feel comfortable us sending a letter to Jerry saying, please, you know, include this in your FEMA request. Well, may I make a suggestion of Maria and Elsa get together as, in as reasonably a time frame as you can, put it together, zoom it around to all of us, and then we can forward it from the committee as well as from you. Okay. Yep. And then everybody right. on the committee can put eyes on it. Yep. All right. That would be great. Happy to help in any yeah, way I other, can. Okay. Love you for it. But the other part of that is what we talked before about, you know, the road to nowhere. And maybe if we get into a fundraising effort for smaller capital projects, we can include some stuff down in Sound Shore. Well, all of these things, I think, come to there's 14 million sitting at the county. We need to start making some requests for it, but we need to get a list of all that together first. Okay. Um, I'm kind of out of items. Anybody have any other thing else they want to put on the table? There was something that I was thinking about, Tony, actually, that if we've got a few minutes before we all have to scoot. 
Um, one of the things that I'm finding talking to residents who flooded is many people had structural insurance. Many people did not have content insurance. And I think somehow we have to get the message out as to the importance of content insurance in addition to structural insurance. So again, I, I know I keep coming back to the same thing, but there were 21 people in the Heights that flooded this time as opposed in their living quarters, as opposed to five people who flooded normally. So a lot of, most of those people are not covered for their contents because they don't take content insurance. And I'm sure it's the same thing all the way down throughout the village. I think it would be important if we can get something together to send out to the community. Maybe it's in Rob's newsletter, maybe it's posted on the website, maybe it's a number of different ish of ideas of the importance of taking content insurance and what it covers. Just a yeah, suggestion. That's a good point. I mean, I still think a lot of people don't even know that their, ca their property casualty insurance doesn't cover floods. Right. So maybe we can work on putting something together. It doesn't have to be done this week, but from the committee to help people understand better. Would, would someone want to be our communications person? Well, I think we have to have something to communicate first. We'll leave that till next month. Yeah. All right, Dan, we good? We're always good. Uh, the only thing, the only question I have is uh, <clears throat> on the action items to be communicated to the village that um, Maria is going to handle that directly uh, with Jerry, with an email to Jerry, or do you want that included uh, I mean to the in, committee. My, in my communication uh, to Jerry and you're following up? That's the only question I have. Um, he, he copied me directly. I'm happy to forward that to the committee if the committee wants to, you know, just have it. Um, yep. I will okay. definitely so send why, that to why, you. Why don't you and Elsa follow up directly uh, and have it come from both of you? I thought okay. we said we were going to come to the committee first if they could do it quickly enough, and then we'd, we'd have the double impact of the citizens as well as the committee behind it. Yeah, I agree. I think it would, should be through the committee. And Maria and I can start it. Uh, I'll be happy to start tomorrow. Works for me. You're running out of time, so you and Maria have to start tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. If you don't get it in this week, it's not going to get there. I'm, I'm going to tell you that now. All right, then, you know, you'll see what you can do. If you can't get it to us and we can't get it, everybody eyes, eyes on it, then you send it directly. Okay. I, I, I'm not trying to, you know, step on anybody's toes. I just, I know the reality of life. <laughs> okay. Dan, are the village offices open on Thursday? Uh, they're open on Thursday. They're not open on Friday. Okay, now, because I know with the Christmas holiday, they were closed also on Thursday. Yeah, no, there's, so I just want to make sure with New Year's. Yeah. They're open okay. on Thursday. They're closed on Friday. That's why I'm saying we're we're basically out of time. Right. So you got a day to do it, and you know, then somebody got, has to read it. All right. Okay. And I would suggest that it be addressed to Jerry, uh, and copy the mayor and board and Dan as well. All right. Okay. All right, and okay. I will Thanks. I will get some information on the uh, buyout program peg and circulate it. And then I'm gonna send a memo. Who should I send the, the buyout memo to, Dan? I, honestly, I think Dan Sarnoff is probably- you're talking, about, you're talking about the NRCS memo? Yes. Jerry. Uh, I've just included that in what I'm sending out tonight to the board and you should follow up directly to those whom I've sent it to. Makes it easy for okay. you. Okay, good. I, I've already composed why we've been talking. Okay. An email. All right. Uh, any other business? Happy New Year, everybody. Thank you. Thank you all. Take care. Bye. Bye.